this uh, it's 130 minutes. So <laughs> yeah, I will do my best. Uh, we've got uh, three ladies that are retiring. Uh, they have served our corporation uh, for, for many years, and, and it's going to be uh, you know very very tough to to replace. Uh, I don't think you can actually ever replace somebody like these ladies. But uh, tonight we have Melinda Burkett, and we've got Barb Van Dyne and Vicki Horaho, who could not be here tonight. She had another appointment. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, these ladies here for just a minute. I'm going to start with uh, Mrs. Burkett. And um, I, I I try to get stories, you know, because everybody wants to hear stories and stuff. And uh, I, I, I think that we're fortunate that uh, I, one of the things that if you really want to get a good story from somebody, you can ask the kids. So, or Mrs. Burkett, I have a whole stack of stories going to get me through my 30 minutes here. <laughs> I'm actually going to read you the top three of them, uh, the, just the first three, and I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of them. But uh, I think hearing from a student, uh, you know, a little bit about that is, is pretty important. But uh, Mrs. Burkett was born in Rochester. She graduated from RHS in 1971. She attended Ball State and has been married to Bill here for 42 years. They have three daughters, six grandchildren, and she began working at Columbia in 1988. She's worked in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade, and she's also worked uh, for the after school program and summer school. And obviously, um, you know, I think the one thing that really stands out uh, in my mind uh, for both of these ladies and for uh, Mrs. Horro is just the, the love that they have for the kids. And that's what it's all about, and that's how you can be in, in education for, for so long. Uh, quick story here from uh, Mrs. Keller, who she works good. <laughs> the first time I had an opportunity to work with Melinda was when this year's seventh graders were in kindergarten. It was without a doubt the toughest group of kids that I ever had. But I remember the first day of school, I had five kids crying, one throwing themselves to the ground, and another one hiding under the table. So she walked in, and the first thing that came out of her, her mouth was, oh my. <laughs> Keller's words. Um, I must admit, I might have used uh, different words coming out of my mouth. <laughs> she, but she was my savior that year. She did everything that was asked of her, and she took the lead when I needed a moment to get my thoughts. I would have not made it through the first nine weeks without her. For the last three years, she's been an IA in my classroom. The first year as special needs IA, and the last year as a kindergarten IA. Words cannot express the gratitude that I have for her. She has always worked so well with the kids and they truly adore her. Melinda is so good at what she does. I can give her plans and activities and she takes them and makes them her own. She knows what the kids need, whether it involves academics, a hug, or just someone to listen to them. Columbia and Rochester Community Schools are losing a great asset this year and she will be greatly missed, but she's, Mrs. Keller is very grateful for everything that she's done. And um, let's hear from a couple of the kids. Mrs. Burks, Mrs. Burkett fixes the dolls' heads. <laughs> Uh, and she helps us when we get hurt. She is my favorite teacher. Here's one up for you. Mrs. Burkett is nice. She is wonderful. I like Mrs. Burkett and she's so very helpful. We're so lucky to have Mrs. Burkett. And I, I'm not sure if that's you or me, but it, it is very good drawing. There might be a tie up there, so that's why I'm saying that. Uh, and this one here, I love Mrs. Burkett because she helps us. She helps us with our morning work and opening our home. And I love her. So I'm going to give you all of these. Mrs. Burkett, we greatly appreciate everything that you've done. And thank you for your service to Rochester. Barb Van Dyne has, uh, she, she's been, I'm just going to start off right now with just a little bit of a personal story that I had. Um, as I was teaching the STEM classes uh, last year, in the beginning of this year, um, Barb has always been one to just check in on me. Uh, make sure, you know, that her kids were well behaved in class and, and just to make sure that I had the things that I needed. And even as we kind of had that transition in the middle of the year, um, she continued to do that, always stopping in always checking on me and it really made me feel good because um, it was almost like a mother figure where you know I, I had somebody checking in on me and um, I, I just can't express how, how grateful I was just to have somebody do that and um, she she brought me in she may not want me to tell you this but she brought me in some uh, some chocolate covered peanuts with just a little gift for really no reason uh, just to kind of say thank you and uh, 
So we had those and I had them in my office for a couple of days and my daughter uh, found them and started eating them. The next thing you know, I found the box at home and I was trying to figure out you know, how that happened and we'll come to find out, Ripley. Mommy! Those. She took them home and started sharing with everybody. So I didn't really get to enjoy them. But <laughs> <laughs> well, my family thanks you very much. So, uh, but Barb is, is uh, she was a graduate from uh, Bremen and uh, she got a degree from Purdue University and she worked at Argus Elementary as an IA and did a maternity leave there. She met her husband, Richard, and they married the following summer. That fall, she was employed by Tippy Valley as a Title I reading director and she taught third grade at Midtone for two years. She received her master's degree from Indiana University South Bend and also a lifetime teaching license. Their daughter Amy was born, their son Tony was born two years later. Um, she worked for a uh, company out of her home for 16 years, was able to earn sales incentives. So these are all the places that she's been. She loves to travel. Hawaii, Israel, Greece, the Greek islands, Italy, Spain, Austria, Germany, England, Alaska, Amsterdam, and Turkey. So if you have any vacations coming up, any ideas, uh, she'll be available to help, help plan those. She taught at Grace Methodist Nursery for two years uh, when her children were in nursery school. She substitute taught Argus, Tippy Valley, and Rochester with the hopes of getting back into education. Uh, there were no job offers, but she still had that passion to get back into teaching. She worked at a John Deere. <laughs> Why did I help? <laughs> 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 years ago, she was done this. That's why. Um, she uh, she worked at a John Deere dealership in Warsaw, and in '60 or in '60s in '96, uh, she was hired as an IA kindergarten moved to a computer lab and fulfilled a first grade maternity leave. The next year, she did morning IA with Kathy Sutton and taught math in her room in the afternoon. She uh, had her first, or very, or her own first grade classroom. At that time, it was split between her and uh, Miss Amy's class. They actually had a wall in that at that time. And um, all I had, all she had room for was a teacher's desk and the student's Mommy. desk. Uh, the following year, she moved across the hall and has been there ever since. So for her 24 years of public teaching, 20 of those years have been at Rochester and at Columbia. Uh, she looks forward to spending time with family, obviously traveling, uh, going places, and um, coming back and making sure that I'm okay. That's so, right. <laughs> I greatly appreciate it, and uh, thank you, Mrs. Van Dyne, for your yeah. service. but I was told that those are for tomorrow. So. <laughs> and uh, um, Vicki Burrow, she, uh, she wrote me a little thing. She, again, she couldn't be here tonight, but she grew up just east of uh, here in North Manchester. And in 83, they settled in Rochester where they felt like it was home. It's been a great place to raise their three children. In 1989, she was happy to be hired as an IA at Columbia. It was a perfect job for a mom with young school kids. My first year, my day was split between uh, Mrs. Mikesell's second grade class and Penny Tyrone's third grade class. Since that first year, she's had a variety of positions all at Columbia. Uh, she spent several years as a helper in one classroom and uh, also traveled from one class uh, to a class helping out those that, or as they were needed. One year she managed the second grade mobile computer lab, pushing laptops from room to room. And for several years, uh, four IAs rode around from the high school to the Columbia in the mornings and she did that. Uh, in her 27 years, she's worked with uh, three superintendents, six principals, and she didn't mention how many teachers, but uh, she, she described them as fine teachers and IAs who uh, she has the fortunate, and she's been fortunate enough to be able to call as friends. Um, even though she knows it's time to go, she sincerely can say that she will miss working with the teachers and the support Mommy. staff. She wanted to tell everybody here thank you uh, for those memories. And, uh, Mrs. Van Dyne has had the uh, pleasure to work with her as well and she just Mommy. shares that she's an amazing artist, uses that talent with the kids um, and she will be especially missed in the teacher's lounge where <laughs> she was uh, very, 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 yes, very knowledgeable in Rochester and uh, not, not in 
in a bad way, but, but a, a go-to person. If you needed to know somebody in Rochester and what they did or you know how they could help you if you needed a fence put up or whatever, she, she knew those people. So um, thank you all for coming tonight and for recognizing these ladies and, uh, and their service to not only uh, Columbia but also to uh, the Rochester community. We have uh, three retirees at uh, Will. Uh, first of all, Nora Hutkins, uh, teaching assistant, special needs assistant. She couldn't be here tonight, but she had 12 years uh, working with Rochester schools, and she will be dearly missed uh, by all the staff. We do have Jerry Brittany here tonight. Jerry has uh, 20 years of service with the uh, custodial maintenance service here with Rochester schools. And Roger Muse, our head custodian, was going to be here, but he had an appointment and he couldn't be here. But I was just talking to Jerry before we started. He even worked 23 years before coming here with Roger. So they had 43 years of, of working together. But I have to say, Jerry is the most punctual person I have ever met in the building. I can set my watch by him. And after school bus duty in the afternoon, I can walk in. And the, and the bathroom in his area is already clean, mopped, sanitized, and trash taken out. And uh, he's very diligent with his work. He does a great job. And uh, we wish Jerry all the best. I think he's got some hobbies at home. He was mentioning gardening. And so we want to, to mention Jerry tonight. So congratulations, Jerry. Our third retiree is Paul Helster. Uh, Paul has 40 years of teaching. Uh, uh, Mr. Emmert, yes. I have to interrupt on this. He's, um, <laughs> Paul, <laughs> we finally caught up with you. <laughs> Mr. Peaks. <laughs> so you are currently under arrest. You're going to have to miss the rest of this party. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, probably one of the first years I was teaching, Peggy Whirlich was known for her um, sense of humor. And she came across an article in a newspaper about a criminal named Teak. And it could have been Paul's twin brother. And for the next, I don't know how many years, that picture would surface in our teacher's life. We had Paul. Uh, and, and it's just been uh, kind of a for the old ones that have been around for about long it's been uh it's followed him all these years so there's not skeeter was available to <laughs> take care of him tonight <laughs> <laughs> we do have some special things planned for, for all three of our retirees this week, but I have asked uh, a couple people to, to maybe speak on Paul's behalf. Uh, so I'm going to ask Judy first. Go ahead, Judy Coffey. I have just a minute. Thank you. Just one. Oh, <laughs> no, it's just in big print, so I can see it. <laughs> I was kind of taken back when um, Mr. Amber asked me to do this because I thought, what on earth can I tell people about Paul that, Be that people can hear? Be careful. What we on earth can together. I tell people about Paul? <laughs> yeah. um, but I decided after about 15 minutes that just the sheer joy of making him turn red <laughs> would be worth it. So everybody turn. Oh, say hi, Paul. They will miss that. And, it, and now we can go on. I met Paul, the educator, um, 23 years ago in August, and I can't believe it's been that long, but it has. And I had to write some of this. So, Paul graduated from Milton Union High School in West Milton, Ohio, in 1972. He attended and graduated from North Manchester College in 1976 and he received his master's from IU in 1979 and if any of this is wrong it's Nancy's fault. <laughs> it was literally years before I realized 
that Paul attended college in Indiana because all I saw was Ohio State shirts, <laughs> red all over the classroom, trinkets, colors, flags, you name it. That's why he turns red. <laughs> and like Mr. Herbert said, he's now taught 40 years, and what I found was amazing was all 40 years were in this county, and I thought that was great. My introduction to Paul was made by the individual that hired me to work in this corporation. And I know some of the older ones will remember Helen Ho. Some of the younger ones probably had her as your nurse. <laughs> but she had a very no-nonsense manner. So in her no-nonsense manner, she simply said, this is Paul Helstern, and he will never show up on time for <laughs> any screening you schedule. <laughs> And she was so right. <laughs> um, his old broods would always march down the hall, single file, right behind him. And they either had a book or a tablet and pencil in their hand. Of course, times change now. I realize it's iPads, but that's the way it goes. But I would always laugh when they go by my door because Paul's stride is three feet long. <laughs> and all of these little ones are trying to keep up, doing their best to keep up, but their little legs look like they were going in circles, and their arms were really swinging just to keep up with him. Got to get the momentum going. I always thought his room was really homey and inviting. I never remember having a classroom that had cushions and curtains and places to go and corners so that you could go read. The only thing I remember was getting swatted on my behind with the Dick and Jane teacher's version reader for talking to my neighbor. <laughs> my nurse's freezer was always full of popsicles. I always had popsicles in there for him. But the one thing that he did not like was puke. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. He could clear out a classroom faster than you can imagine. It was best just to send him home immediately. So, some days the man drove me absolutely crazy. Ten years ago, next month, I met Paul Helster. Um, my husband and I began traveling with Paul and Nancy, and our first trip was to Alaska. I loved it. Um, but this is when I learned about the caring, always wanting to learn, ADHD male adult. <laughs> you have not lived until you have gone through airport security behind Paul Nelson. <laughs> you have no idea how long it takes him to empty his pockets, get the backpack, and you pray that he wore slip-ons that day. <laughs> Nancy and I swear we're getting him a man bag. <laughs> He's the only guy I know that can schedule a walking tour of New York City for 7.30 in the morning, <laughs> followed by a ferry tour over to the Statue of Liberty, and then back downtown to the NBC store, Lego store, Rockefeller Plaza, and don't forget Hershey's. <laughs> 10 o'clock at night, Nancy and I are crashing Paul heads for Times Square and goes tie shopping. <laughs> we refer to this as a Paul vacation. <laughs> but what never ceases to amaze me is always learning. Whether it is about tundra vegetation or humpback whale feeding frenzies, whether it's about what the base of the Statue of Liberty is made of or what battle was fought at the fort in Nassau. Ever been to a cooking class in Mexico? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even on the ship, while the three of us are sitting by the pool reading, Paul's in ceramic class. <laughs> and always because he wanted to bring back something new and different to do with next year's class. Paul, enjoy the retirement thing. It takes a little getting used to, but it's awesome. Enjoy the soon-to-be four grandkids. Preschool drop-off is a hoot. <laughs> and I truly look forward to our October fall foliage tour of the East Coast. Me too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Mr. Alco had Joe Weaver that would like to say something about Paul. <laughs> you know, Paul, I could have gone two roads yes, to do this. That's true. One red faced, maybe one not so red faced. And you chose. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> I also was told by somebody did before I started this to ask. Are you truly retiring? Is this official? Yes. Okay, because we've heard this for a couple of years now. Now I'm going to retire next year. I'm going to retire next year. So, so I can go ahead. I guess in knowing Paul, and Paul and I really go way back. And this is like almost family way back, except for it's my husband's family. Um, his cousin is married to my brother-in-law. And because of that connection, He's got connected with the Weaver family and was even my husband's roommate in college. And so um, I, I knew Paul, I, well, I did my student teaching with Paul's sister then. So, I mean, there's just a real background there. I knew Paul before I even moved to Rochester. And so one of the things I, in watching him and teaching with him, he, said, he, he loves teaching math. And so I wanted to do a little bit of math for Paul today <laughs> and really take a look at what 40 years of teaching looks like. So I, no, I did use my calculator, I'll tell you. <laughs> but I figured out that um, 40 years, and I did take a few times out because like you've had a surgery here the, and some things have happened. So, but you, you've taught over 7,000 days. And you have influenced over 1,100 students, which means you've also had over 1,100 conferences with parents. Yeah. That, that probably, if I'm thinking right, I, I almost could have doubled that number because when you do case conferences and everything else, it, it really can get a lot. Over 50,400 plus daily lesson plans. Seven to eight different reading language arts yeah. series, yeah. seven to eight different math series, seven to eight different science social studies series. Oh, there's a lot there. I'm sure that you were over, well over 100 field trips and then other outings planned or supervised. Um, so now away from the math to some of the stories. I don't know if you knew this, Paul, but you were, you were crowned at one point the copy king. Yes. <laughs> but, but you would walk in his room and you would never know it because he was also the most organized person I've ever been around. And if you needed something, hang on just a second, he'd go over, open the right drawer, pull it out. There it was. I marveled at that. Um, you also, I'm sure, have the, the best cursive handwriting for a lefty. <laughs> and um, you also hold the, the record for the most paid for an apple pie at an auction. <laughs> Paul is creative. And when I first started teaching with Paul, really was some of my first years of teaching here at Rochester. That was back in the time when paddling was not frowned upon at all. <clears throat> in fact, Paul had his very own paddle in his classroom. And there was one day that Stephanie Barkman went to his room speaking up and said, Mr. Halster, but we were having some problems with the kids. And Paul said, I know how to handle this. And so she went in and said, Mr. Halster, I need you and your paddle. And then he comes to my room, paddle in hand, and said, Mrs. Weaver, I need you in the hallway. And Stephanie had gone back to her room. He goes to her room and said, Mrs. Barkman, I need you in the hallway. With where I, and he had his paddle. So he goes out there and then takes his shoe and hits it, the bottom of it, so hard. Made me scream. And I'm sure those kids are just like, what is going on? It took them a little while to figure this out, but it worked. And, and just despite having that paddle, never saw him show anything but love and kindness to his students. Never saw him swing it besides on his own foot. This is the hard ones for me. <laughs> friendship. Such friendship and kindness to our staff. When my four-year-old daughter had a depressed skull fracture, because Paul and Stephanie were the first ones to come to our house when we were able to bring her home from the hospital. 
there were nights, and one in particular that I had a bad migraine, didn't feel like it was safe for me to drive home. Paul sat at my desk and waited for it to pass. Paul, you fought the good fight. You worked hard, and you found one grace. Thank you for all you've done for me and my family. Thank you for all you've done for your students. Thank you for all you've done for Rochester Community Schools. We will miss you. Week a little too, but congratulations to Jerry and congratulations to Paul. Thank you. <laughs> Except to say thank you so very much to all of you for your service. I have had the very distinct honor to get to interact with all of our retirees. Always to get a great hug from Mrs. Van Dyne in the home if she has the best ones. Um, Melinda and I go way back, uh, her oldest daughter and myself were best friends all through high school and the studying factor that Mrs. Burkett is in the building, she does it, she's just so steady and any of you who have worked with small ones think, wow, <laughs> and, and I couldn't have said it better than Mr. Snyder did about Mrs. Horaho and if you want to know what's going on, Mrs. Horaho is <laughs> to me she is synonymous with Columbia, she is just such a bright spot and we will miss her. Um, I got to work in the building where, when Jerry was there and he has taken such great care of that building and Mr. Helster and I got to have as a teacher because we rotated, you know, he's one of my teachers and we used to back then have some really fun summer schools that we would do and I am not an artist. That's why I taught kindergarten, because kindergartners think you're great. Even. <laughs> but that is such a talent of Paul's, and I still, well, until very recently had one of the um, projects that we did where we put nails into a board and put string around it, and I just love the creativity that Paul always brought to his class. He still uses it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it's a good idea. You should. So thank you all very much. I just want to uh, say that you're part of why I can tell people that we have a great school system, so thank you. And uh, the teachers that I remember most are the ones that cared, not necessarily the ones that knew the most. So and people don't care what you know until they know you care. So thank you so much for that. And. Uh, <laughs> I do want to tell something on Nora Van, the IA. Oh, yes, please do. <laughs> She's a card. I, 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 I wish she could have been here. But she told me one day that she stopped an argument between two boys. They were kind of fighting. And she's kind of creative. And she just turned around and said, do these pants make my butt look big? <laughs> <laughs> if I was over, <laughs> Retirees, do you have anything you would like to share? They've never been so fun. <laughs> Anybody else that would like to share before we just fellowship and enjoy the refreshments? I really have a hard time being quiet. <laughs> um, I taught with Paul for quite a few years, and um, anyone who really knew us probably thought we were having an affair because we talked all the time. And um, Paul and I uh, discussed everything. We uh, talked after school. We discussed uh, how we were going to handle problems and how we were going to deal with kids' problems. And um, I really didn't like Paul at first. <laughs> In fact, I was just actually ticked off when I had Paul. I had had Lenny Wilson as my student teacher the year before. And I knew they were going to hire another third grade teacher next door. They were converting part of the library into a classroom and they were going to put another third grade teacher next door. And I knew who it needed to be. It was going to be my student teacher, 
Winnie Wilson. <laughs> and she didn't get the job. They hired some dude from, from Caston by the name of Paul Helster. And I didn't like it. <laughs> he, seemed nice. <laughs> he seemed nice enough, but I knew Winnie would do a better job. But I grew to like him. And Winnie did get a job, as you guys all know. And she is wonderful. But you know what? I discovered Paul Houston was pretty wonderful, too. And uh, he may be a better teacher. And um, hopefully I helped him a few times. We did uh, smack the shoe in the hallway. Uh, all the classrooms got really quiet. He thought, my classroom thought it was from his room. And his classroom thought it was from my room. <laughs> And everybody thought somebody got smacked. <laughs> but no one got spanking. Everybody wondered who got in trouble. And I'll tell you, they were all like, <laughs> they were all working very hard and they went into the classrooms and all they had to do was just act like things were, people were in trouble. And they really weren't in trouble at all. We just kind of deceived them a little bit. Fall, we went on lots of field trips and uh, had lots of fun, but we sweated out a few times too. Yep. We went, at that time in third grade, we went to the Shrine Circus on Saturdays. <laughs> and, and, and early in the morning. And um, we lost kids. <laughs> we had all sorts of fun. <laughs> and, um, we got paid so well for that, too. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> but um, we had lots of good memories from that. And that's, and that's what kids remember. It's just like you said. They remember the stories. They remember the things that happened and the things that you told them and the, the connections that you made with the kids. It's not what you taught us. I can't remember a thing my teachers ever taught me. I really can't. Somewhere along the line, I learned something. But I remember the connections they made with me. Is that what you remember with your teachers? The connections they made. They were either bad or they were good. And some of them I remember were bad, too. <laughs> um, Paul made a lot of good connections. And I'm so proud to have talked with him. Um, you told a funny story. And I've got to tell a funny story to you. And it's not even on Paul. It's not even on Paul. <laughs> but it is about pants being unzipped. <laughs> so stop your pants. It's mine. <laughs> One day I was getting a spelling test and I'm walking around. And this little girl is writing a note. And as I walk by her, she's writing a note. And we're taking a test. And I just pick up the note. And, go on. and as I get clear over on the other side of the classroom and I face her, I open up the note and it says, Your pants are unzipped. <laughs> so then I turn around. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love the kids. <laughs> Um, I had 39 years, didn't quite make it 40, but loved teaching too, and I enjoyed the years with Paul and with Jeff and many others. Oh, congratulations. A sincere thank you to each and every one of you. You represent what we strive so desperately for, and so just a sincere thank you. And at this time, if you'd like, we can um, fellowship. There's cake and punch here and continue to enjoy each other's company. And at 6.30, we'll start our board meeting, and we'll invite you to stay for that as well. There's always excitement that happens there, too. So. <laughs> Don't want to miss it.